Just sing something. I don't know. What do we got here, Linda? Which number is it? It should be 250. It should be 250? Yeah. Okay. So we just make note of that. Okay. 250 is that second hymn. Very good. No worries. Typos happen. You don't ever want to look at one of my sermons. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Woo! You'll wonder how I got through college. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, following worship today, immediately after we're done, I'm going to do the post of quick. We're going to have a very brief congregational meeting, and there's a good reason for this. We're going to bring to you as the Congregation of Holy Spirit the opportunity to host two different outreach programs, Happy Harbor Preschool and Kids Cafe. We want to explain to you what these are all about. Um, my wife is here. She can answer some questions for you. If you have any questions, we talked about this with the leadership last week, and they were all in favor of this, but before we go forward, we have to t bring this to you. So, just it's a, it's a very brief thing, and we'll have a vote to make sure it's official when we're done, and then you can all go get your cookies. That's how I know it'll be brief. I won't want to hold anybody up from your cookies. All right? Yes, no hangry people voting, yes. All right, anything else? All right, if you're able, please rise. Blessed be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. <clears throat> Loving and forgiving God. We, we confess that we are not acted by sin, in spite of our best efforts, in the own strength. We have not
Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today we light the third candle of Advent, the shepherd's candle. This candle represents the humble witnesses of the heavenly displays to announce the birth of Christ. As they stood quietly watching over their sheep, suddenly a light, then a glorious noise, at first filled with fear, then consumed with awe. This candle also represents joy, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let us pray. Lord God, during these weeks of Advent, the days grow shorter and colder, but the light of Jesus will shine forth as surely as the light shines forth from our Advent wreath, giving us warmth in your promises. Lord God, help us shine like these flames. Help us prepare the way for your Son by offering the warmth of your love to others. Help us to be good shepherds to our fellow man. Help us to share our joy in you, O Jesus, who reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good fruit 
will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What, what, what should we do then? The crowd asked. And John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share one of them with the person who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even the tax collectors came to be baptized. <laughs> Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, what should we do? And he replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting ex expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod, the Tetrarch, because of his marriage to Herodias, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all by locking John up in prison. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Please be seated. Their hearts 
were offensive and so were their deeds. But yet, there were words of hope in John's message, even if it was delivered quite harshly. Still, people came to be convicted of the truth. You see, God was already at work preparing them to receive John's message of repentance. I am, of course, talking about those who would accept his message and not the skeptics and the spectators who wanted to be entertained by this wild man. This is the key to the gospel message preached even today. People need to know what the problem really is and that it is very severe and it is without human remedy. And sometimes that message needs to offend, to reach deep enough to force self-reflection. Humans are under the wrath of God. We are in danger of eternal judgment. Our works are an offense before our righteous God. We humans must own our sinfulness, confess it, and repent of it if we want to be forgiven. John preached the gospel of repentance. Repentance is more than being sorry for one's sins. It involves rethinking and honestly considering our behavior. And the Hebrew concept of this is to return to solid ground and choose a different road other than the one that humanity may currently be on. Remember, Jesus hasn't begun his ministry yet. So this is the best they got through John the Baptist to please God. John tells them they could not depend on their relationship with Abraham to save them. John says that God is able to raise up the stones on the ground to be the children of Abraham. By saying this, one could argue that this is a reference to the stones speaking of the Gentiles. So people were not children of Abraham by their self-identification with Abraham or even genetic descendants from him. And this would have smacked them very hard. And then John goes on to say the axe is already laid at the roots of the tree. Now we don't speak like that today. So we need to look at that. And I believe it refers to those who falsely trusted in their pedigree that they would be cut off from the people of God. What about us? Too many people think the title Christian exempts them from this sinful world. To those in this condition, be warned. The axe is already laying at the roots of their trees. And always remember, always remember, we as Christians are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Repentance isn't real unless one's life shows the fruit of repentance. It is more than verbal assent. It is a transformation of life and a visually known and seen producing a fruit worthy of repentance. There must be a change in the heart. There must be evidence. The people responded by asking what these fruits were. How do we know that we have repented? And John's answer was quite shocking to them. Let the person who has, who has two cloaks give one to the person who has none. Share your food with the hungry. Live the life that you know is right. And believe it or not, I gave you this answer a few weeks ago in these words. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest commandment. And it was given by Jesus himself. That way y'all don't have to remember 613. Just one. 
The tax collectors came to be baptized. These people were considered to be beyond hope, and even worse than the Gentiles, yet they knew they needed to repent and be forgiven. Soldiers came to be baptized. These folks knew very well of their evil deeds, yet they knew they needed to repent and be forgiven. The common people came in droves to find a new way back to God. <clears throat> You see, it was the high-minded religious elite who scoffed at the wild man and his lunatic actions and ravings. These were really the brood of vipers and for whom the axe was for, and they wouldn't repent. Spiritual blindness, pride, and arrogance affect the people of God of John's and Jesus' day, and is still prevalent in society and culture today. And if that statement is true, and it is, this makes the message of repentance timeless. John concludes by saying that another one who is far greater than him was coming. He would thoroughly purge the people and separate the wheat from the chaff. If John's message was fearful, the one who was coming was to be feared. This is why John preached the way he did. He needed to be in your face, rude and insulting, to wake people up before it was too late. Their life and their eternity depended. Have things changed today? Nope. I, I even think there could be a case that it's worse. What about the church today compared to the temple and the synagogues of then? Spiritual blindness, pride, and arrogance still infest us to this day. And having your name on the membership rolls of a church, any church, doesn't give us any of us a free pass to act like heathens now and then get through the pearly gates later. The guy standing at the gate will want to see the fruit that you've produced before he's going to let you in. Just as John announced, proclaimed, and pontificated about the coming of the Messiah, in that day and age, we too know that Christ is coming again, and it is high time for us to prepare for his arrival. Let us not tarry any longer and prepare ourselves now. This is the Advent season, the time of watching, waiting, and great anticipation of our Savior's arrival. Let us be bold to call ourselves to self-reflection. Examine our ways, our words, and our deeds. And honestly confess, humbly repent, and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, the axe is already laying at the roots of the tree. If your life hasn't produced or isn't producing spiritual fruit, I say to you today, it's not too late. You see, there's words of hope here. And also, don't get led astray by some crowd of vipers. For the axe that cuts down the tree can also be used to dispatch the snake.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord pour out his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.